Ladies and gents, welcome to the round 16 review edition of Footy Rants. Um, jump straight into things we see after the, the results from the weekend. The, the NRL ladder stands as follows. The Storm out on top uh, on 26 points. A, uh, a critical victory for the, for the Roosters against Melbourne on the weekend. Uh, if the Storm were to get away with that one, would have seen them three wins clear um, in first place. So uh, a big, big win for uh, a few teams in the top eight this weekend. So the Roosters, Broncos, Manly, Dragons, and the Cowboys all coming up with, with critical wins that sort of cemented their, their spots um, within the eight. And, and for some, the, being the Broncos and Manly, uh, the top four. So the Sharkies were the ones to uh, miss out on the weekend. So they dropped out of the top four. So yeah, Storm out on 26 points, Roosters on 24 points in second place. And then we're all locked up uh, for third position on 22 points. We have Brisbane, Manly, and Cronulla um, on sixth place, all tied up. We got the Dragons and the Cowboys, and rounding out the eight, we have Parramatta on 18 points. So we see um, outside the eight, Penrith, 16 points, Warriors, 16 points, Raiders, Rabbitohs, Bulldogs, all on 14 points. The Titans on 12 points, Newcastle, and the West Tigers on eight. So, you know, unlucky there for, for Newcastle. Could have uh, put some space between uh, themselves and the Tigers after they lost to the Titans on Friday night. But, yeah, we'll, we'll get to all of those following games. So really sort of sets the tone now for, uh, for an interesting race home for that minor premiership. Uh, I think if the Storm win that game there... It, almost ices uh, that, that minor premiership. That would have been really hard to, to gun down, um, especially now we're starting to come out the back end of origin period and for, for them to have been so successful throughout that without their origin stars um, being rested, that, that would have been a massive coup for them. So Craig Bellamy will undoubtedly be thoroughly disappointed with that outcome. So if we get into our video. So our first game on Friday night we had uh, the, the Bulldogs up against the Warriors. Uh, we, I tipped a, an upset with the Dogs that, that didn't really come off. So we, we saw the Warriors come out 21-14 victors. Uh, there was a, a few blokes backing up from Origin for the Bulldogs in um, Jackson, Clemmer, and, and Morris wasn't present. So uh, we've seen early on in, the, in these wet conditions, it was always going to be uh, a question of whether the Warriors would be able to fire uh, we've seen the dogs in, in the wet in the past just be able to, to grind out wins. That, and I remember they, they ground out a, a solid victory against the, the Broncos earlier in the year. And I think there was a, another game. I can't quite remember the opposition. But yeah, they, they managed to, to tough out the win. Uh, the Warriors really stood up. You know, without four, and I, I really was questioning whether or not they'd be able to fire an attack. And then we see that man there in Isaac Luke went off injured as well in the 33rd minute. So... Um, you know, Nathaniel Roach came on and, and played a pivotal role in the middle, and we see there his defence was was extremely solid. Um, and this shot that we see on on Reynolds there in his return match uh, just demonstrated to me that the Warriors were keen to just get stuck in in the middle and, and really stand up to these dogs forwards. And I thought they really did that. Um, I thought Clemmer was was fairly gallant uh, coming off the bench and, and stepping up after uh, his his Origin appearance on Wednesday night, but. Just a few disciplinary things, and I think Reynolds was, it, it was apparent that he was sort of dusting off some, some cobwebs, and when you're coming back from a, a hamstring injury in the wet, uh, you get bogged down real quick, and uh, ended up with, with eight missed tackles uh, as, a, as a half, defending on those edges, you, you really can't be a, affording to, to miss those sort of numbers. Uh, there, there was a wall there, you know, we see the scoreline, we've got to... Uh, 14 points to, to eight. Um, I think if they kick the goal there to get it to 14-10, it, it might have been a, a bit of a different mentality for the Dogs. Uh, they were still very much in this game with, with 15 minutes to go. Uh, but just a little bit of lackluster here, and I, I guess you call it bad luck in the wet that, that it goes through uh, Montoya's hands there. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you, you've got to be cleaning up um, and, and making the most of these opportunities. And it was uh, just... Just good to see them, them show a little bit of poise. Um, we see uh, Johnson smoke that field goal. Uh, great execution, good lead up into that set. But even then, you know, the, the dogs weren't out of it. I think they've got to stop getting in these positions uh, where they, they find themselves still in matches late in the game 
but just fail to execute. Uh, I think that'll be something that, that Des Hasler um, will be disappointed with. You know, they, they struggle, they're constantly abused about not being able to score points, but still find themselves in, in an arm wrestle late in the game. And when, when you come up against a side like the Warriors, who, who have showed inconsistency, inconsistency much like the Bulldogs have, they need to be able to grind it. That's where they've got to get back to that dog's culture, being able to grind out wins. Uh, there was a few pivotal moments there that I thought could have been turned in the dog's favour and they could have made the most of a, of a dark situation. But yeah, just couldn't come up the answers uh, when when they needed it. Uh, I think once Reynolds... I think, I think Reynolds sort of just needed to blow off those, those cobwebs. I thought he would have come back with a bit more explosiveness, but you know, not letting the bloke off the, the hook too easily. Uh, the conditions, you know, you, you can't you can't negate the fact that yeah, coming back from a from a hamstring injury, that, that those things do do have an effect. So yeah, I guess it's just back to the drawing board there for the Bulldogs, and I don't know what what sort of answers you can come up with now, but yeah, con- consistency just just isn't there for that club at the moment, and and the Warriors just took advantage and and will uh, revel in the fact that they've now got gone back to back. So so look look for the Warriors to. Hopefully, continue to build. You know, we, we say it week in, week out that they've got the the side to, to be damaging in this competition. And you know, if they can make a bit of a run in this back end of the season, they could definitely sneak into the eight. Um, and second game, we had the Tigers up against the Titans. Well, you know, it was a little bit of back and forth early on. The Tigers were very much in it, especially without Tedesco. Uh, I thought they performed quite well and almost picked up where they left off in, in the pressure that they placed on the Sharks last week after sort of you know going to sleep just for that 10 minute period and and it ended up being pretty much the same sort of story here they were they were right in the match um it was just this this left edge uh defense of uh of brooks suli and um zelezniak they, they just really really struggled uh without my boy mitchell moses to, to hammer in uh halves defensive efforts uh, it, it's left for me to to hammer his partner or former partner in crime, Luke Brooks, and, and he was uh, nothing short of terrible again uh, in defence. The communication between him, himself and, and Suli, they, they just came up with some, some poor reads. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it wasn't always his fault, but uh, just getting the body in front uh, obviously goes a long way to at least fucking preventing some of these points. And we see here on the edge, um, Suli just jams in unnecessarily. Puts Brooks under all sorts of pressure, and then he's not even left in a position where he can can even get in front of um, Harrell. So we see there misses it. Simple catch pass for for um, Hayne there. You're never going to question a, a man of, of his ability to to make that right decision. And then we see it again here. Then they stay off, and then he simply just runs around uh, Suli. So it, it was just a variation on the same play, and they just kept coming back there. Beats beats Brooks inside. Still had a lot of work to do, and then Hayne comes up with his second. So, you know, it was just a few um, attacking reads that, that um, Hayne needed to make, and he ends up with a try assist and two tries. So he basically turned that, that game on its head in the space of 10 minutes, and, you know, you, you can basically say that that 10-minute period, Hayne won them the game. Um, so, yeah, it's just those little lapses. I thought Jacob Little was really good for the Tigers. Um, got through a mountain of work. But, yeah, it was just the the execution of the the. Tigers that uh, that ultimately let them down. Um, up front, Wallace and James got back to their damaging best that we've seen at the start of the year. Ended up with uh, 174 metres and 30 tackles for Wallace and 138 metres and 33 tackles for James. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it was pretty much the, the Conrad Hurrell and, and Jared Haynes show on that right edge uh, come late in the game. So, yeah, just that Tigers edge defence, that's probably what they'll be just getting back to, to working on. Um, Moses Suli, only a young kid, started on the wing, moved into the centres. He's a big body, um, and it's just going to be a bit of time in, in the game where, where he just needs to acclimatise to that. Uh, I get, you know, the Tigers and the Knights are in pretty similar situations. They're, they're in that rebuilding phase. It, it's about getting experience under, under their belt. But, yeah, I think Cleary will be, be really disappointed that, that just those little lapses in concentration over... Over short periods of time, have have cost them four points in the last two weeks. So if they can clean that that up, which they'll get the opportunity to do against the their um, will decide who, who sits on the bottom of the ladder um, in, in isolation next week when the, the Tigers and the Knights come up against each other this week. So wh- whoever can execute uh, in defence better, I think will will win that game next weekend. 
Uh, moving forward, we got the, the Cowboys and Penrith. Uh, what an enthralling game this was. Uh, but you, you look at the stats, um, and Penrith should really get belted, and, and that's obvious where uh, where Jonathan Thurston is, is sorely missed uh, for, for those opportunistic plays and, and just general steering game management uh, for, for the Cowboys. So, you know, the Cowboys ended up with, with 58% of possession, um, and that's that's what you want to do. When, when you've got an attacking side um, of the ability that Penrith has and, and, and their youth, you just need to start them with possession, and you're going to go a long way to winning games. Um, 86% completions for the Cowboys, which was really positive to see. Uh, but yeah, when, when the Penrith are left to make up 111 more tackles, they, they build pressure. Cowboys had, had three dropouts, um, and... Penrith gave away five more penalties. You know, you, you sort of look there, and, and the fact that it was six nil at half time in favour of Penrith was was a miracle. But uh, what I found that the Cowboys did really well was they just they just won the middle, um, which we said was going to be where it was going to be won and lost. Um, it was going to be interesting to see how Tamo came up against um, his, his former club, and and he was the only one to to run over a hundred meters, um, but. Uh, the the pivotal role um, I sort of felt was was Cohen Hess off the bench. He's playing that roving middle role. Ended up with uh, what do we have here? He, play, he only played fifty three minutes, uh, twenty five hit ups, two hundred thirty one meters, twenty one tackles, and, and Tamalolo ran for over two hundred meters again as well. So yeah, they, they just won the middle there, um, which which allows you options to, to to play to your edges and like we say, week in week out, win the middle first and and then let your outside backs. Um, finish with, with high percentages and you'll go a long way to winning most matches. So that's that's basically what I felt was was on display um, for the Cowboys there. And, and they, they did that. They, they just hung tight and, and kept chipping away. I guess the, the most disappointing part for, for Paul Green was the fact that they had to leave it so late to, to even be in a winning position. Um, but yeah, Ethan Lowe ended up being the difference. We, we'll see things sort of play out here. Um, just held off in, in defense, slid off, and, and Nathan Cleary is going to make it pay. He's, he's a young kid who's going to, I, I believe, play a, a fair bit of rep footy in his future as we, we you know, we're sort of coming to the end of a, a representative era now with, with a lot of senior players coming towards the, the end of their career, and there's going to be a, a massive shift in, in youth in Australian rugby league coming through, and I think uh, Nathan Cleary is very much a part of that proposition moving forward. So... Yeah, I think he did did enough there to, to show control. There was a little bit of conjecture and obvious um, rebuttal in in the Cowboys um, camp there, but you know we can we can see he, he very much, if anything, uh, Lachlan Cook probably helped him over uh, by by being able to pin that ball against his leg. So skip forward through this a little bit. But how about this, Kyle Feltz try um, to to level the game. I think he scored, uh, I think it's the fifth or sixth week in a row, and it's just left, I don't think anyone really <laughs> thought that Ethan Lowe would walk up and bang this. Straight over the eight of the little at home, and it, and it keeps him well inside the, the, the top eight now. So they'll be, they'll be really happy that they sort of, I guess, shook the critics um, in, in this performance, the Cowboys, and, and they'll look to, to go on and, and build some pressure without... Uh, Thurston for the rest of the year. There's no use dwelling on the fact now. It's it's well and truly part and parcel result for that that club. And um, the only fault that I really have for Kyle Labor is is probably his defence, but that's just going to come through time. Um, it's just more his his um, I guess his his style. He drops that head real early, so he's got to be careful he already got knocked down in that first game against the Storm um, with Vunavalu and there was a couple of times there where I thought he was going to, was going to happen to him again so yeah if they can just clean up that that edge defence uh, I thought you know Michael Morgan ended up with two try assists uh, which ultimately won in the game they only scored um, two so yeah m moving forward the, the Cowboys just need to build that pressure uh, and really try and build that structure around Michael Morgan and he definitely needs to uh, to stand up and and be a leader in that side, but but as long as the the forwards keep doing their job, uh, they'll, they'll still definitely uh, take part in the final series come the end of the year. Uh, next game we had the Raiders up against the Broncos. It was pretty much just a uh, 
a tale of, of who executed best at, at crucial times, I felt. You know, it was a pretty high-scoring game, uh, you know, 30 points to 20. Um, and, and it wasn't through lack of execution, um, I felt, from from the Raiders. It was probably more the, the Broncos just, just won the battle of the middle, much like we sort of just spoke about with the Cowboys. Um, they, they just got on the front foot early. Um, and, and the big difference was Hunt off the bench. I thought he was really, really strong for him. And if, if he doesn't, uh, at least, I think the, the two big advocates moving forward um, for, for Kevy Walters and the Queensland side has to be uh, Ben Hunt and Daly Cherry Evans. And they're probably the ones that have been least spoken about at the moment. I know Hunt hasn't really had the opportunity to play uh, too much first grade in, in recent weeks. and But yeah, if, if you're going to look at any performances over the weekend, um, Hunt and Cherry Evans are, are two definite standouts for Queensland and, and they've got to be very much considered. Uh, I don't know what Cherry Evans has done. I don't want to harp on too much because we are in the Bronx game. But yeah, he's he's got to be so, so close. So I'm not sure if he's pissed someone off at that high level. But yeah, the, the execution on the edges for the Broncos was... The difference that you know we see Glenn just went over for that try before and, and Gillett it is just a matter of running that great line that he does and that's why he's been a, a representative player for, for so many years now. Uh, th there was a big momentum shift there come the back end of that first half when Kotrick gets away with that one. Um, but again, it, it just sort of, they probably lacked a little bit of pressure. Um, the Raiders with, with Croker, he had a bit of an off night with the boot. But yeah, the, the, the edge defense there, great try from, from Gillett. Yeah, it was funny being being such a high scoring game. It just came down to just a few key moments. I, I didn't, even though there's 50 points scored, I didn't actually find it that entertaining of a game. I thought it was not so much the class of execution. It was probably just the lack of effort from from both sides at times in defence. Um, David Mead got got caught out a couple of times on on his edge and, and came up with a few poor one on one misses. Um, Especially, you know, that, that, that's right there. You know, Leilua for mine is probably about the only bloke who scores that try. I mean, I know they were caught short and, and, and someone was out of position, but it was just great awareness from Leilua to be able to put himself in that position. And uh, when, when Gillett ices the game at the end there for the Bronx, it, I think it, it was just intent, you know. He just wanted it more. Uh, and that's, that's what got them got them the win. Uh, to beat Canberra in Canberra, you know, that's no easy task. Uh, I know it hasn't been as much of a fortress for them as it has been in, in, in past, but, uh, you know, I think it just comes down to another one of those wins that you're like, oh, yeah, Bronx, yeah, they, they just won. You know, you, you can't really um, put your finger on too many culminating areas of their, their game that was super structured and, you know, um, clinical execution. It, it was... Probably more just the, the little bit of influence from from Marshall and Hunt. Um, in, in my opinion, they, they need to be the, the starting halves next week for, for Brisbane. Um, it's a massive clash. Uh, a big opportunity to uh, put Melbourne Storm on the back burner. Uh, they got beaten on the buzzer earlier in the year. Uh, by them with, it, with a Cameron Smith um, conversion from the sideline. So they'll want to make amends there, back up at Suncorp. Uh, to really close that gap, you know, they can be tied. If, if the Roosters get a win next week and, and Brisbane win, you know, you're all locked up on top of the ladder and that just increases the opportunities for, for everyone else in that top four to, to have a crack come this back end of the year. Like I said, I think that could be a, a pivotal point in the season for Melbourne, that loss to the Roosters. So we'll, we'll get on to that now. A lot of changes in the, the Melbourne side. Um, as we we knew with four of their origin stars uh, not present. We've seen um, Jerome Hughes, as I expected, got, got his start. Didn't know whether he'd play fullback or six, but, but they went with that, that same combination that they went with last week, leaving Munster out the back. And all the points came exactly where, where I thought they would come from. Um, Kiri unlucky not to, to get off to a flying start there with his hand just going into touch. But yeah, all the points came from, from where I thought. Tom Mapea, I don't think he's the centre at all. His, uh, his decision-making is quite poor, and, and we see there he gets caught flat-footed, and they just fucking... Orbison, of all people, you know. It, 
yeah, yes, he can. He's Mr. Fix it, and he can find his way to the line. But he's not someone you think of straight away when you think great footwork. Um, and then we see a, another just just opportunities that that Melbourne took there. You know, Adokar, he, he's the type of player that you want in your team um, to capitalise on that because you know he has that attribute that you can't coach, and that's raw speed. But yeah, Tom Payer and also Scott. You know, they came up with four and five missed tackles respectively. So. When you're in that position, which is the hardest position to tackle, you, you need to be firing and that system needs to be strong. And then we see there where I thought uh, Melbourne were going to get their points was exactly where I said um, through through Keary and um, Madison and Guerra, they both substituted on that, that left edge and, and Felice Cafusi tore through and, and sent Brody Croft over for his first try in, in NRL. And great execution there from, from Munster, I guess with that Melbourne factor and the presence in, in origin. Um, for Melbourne, it definitely doesn't do uh, Munster any disservice uh, in, in being a, a potential candidate to, to get his origin debut for Queensland in Game 3. Uh, I think that the, just the fact that he is in um, that, that Storm jersey and there are so many Storm players, Kevin Walters could lean towards that. And how about this finish here from Vunavalu? You know, it does not get any tighter Again, as a coach, it must be such a luxury for Bellamy to have, you know, a, a winger that can finish so well and is so prolific in such an early stage of his career. Um, he's definitely going to go down as as one of the greats in, in his ability. Again, we get to this crucial point late in the game uh, for, for Melbourne, where you know they let the Cowboys back in after leading twenty two fourteen last week, and it went to to extra time. And um, when Hughes scores scores his first try in, in Storm colours. You, you felt like the game was, was iced and, and they got themselves in that position last week. But yeah, just little lapses in concentration. Um, we see Curtis Scott sort of just get turned inside out there, makes a one-on-one -on -one tackle, gets left with two markers where he doesn't need to be. Um, and, and you know when you've got that edge of, of Kiri, Mitchell and um, Tupo, you know, they're, they're going to make you pay nine times out of ten. And that's exactly what they did in this last ten minutes. They just kept getting towards that edge and... I thought, you know, Ferguson, he'd probably, even though he ended up with some big numbers, he ended up uh, with over 200 metres. Um, I thought he was fairly sound. Um, but again, when you've got a player of that class and he executes um, on that level to, to give Michael Gordon this opportunity, you knew he was never going to miss. Um, and then all the momentum was was done and dusted from there. And a gallant effort from Munster to, to stop you know, Pierce, but again, for, for someone who's had such a poor um, field goal kicking record, he's definitely made amends uh, this year with, with two crucial wins uh, for the Roosters. Bellamy, he'll be really disappointed, and, and I know that it'll just come back to one word, and, and that's execution and, and playing a full 80. They're on the... I, I guess with, with anything... You know, you're going to experience 50-50s. And last week, they were on the, the right side of a, of a one-point one win. And this week, they experienced the, the dark side. Um, so, you know, not not the end of the world. But at the same time, it's a it's a very, very critical loss. Top of the table clash, like we said. It's shortened that, that three-win um, gap at the top of the ladder. But I guess the positives you take out is, you know, we we're missing so much firepower. These guys were only missing cordoner. Um, and I know you should really say Auden only because we've seen the effect that Cordner had in the last time he, he came back post-Origin and scored two tries much like Gillett did. Um, but yeah, you, you just can't can't allow for that. And I think the big difference in, in stabilising the Roosters' play late in the game was the influence of um, Maria Hargraves and, and Narper. I thought they were massive up the guts and, and really got stuck into um, into Bromwich and, and you know, Finucane tried his ass off but yeah unfortunately just that inexperienced on those edges and cost them you know just some of those defensive reads you'll see there off that last last try that we showed uh, second last try sorry um, when, when Tupo scored that that miss from or well, it was just a a system error from from Scott getting caught at marker with Croft he, he really needed to be back in position because that just stripped him of a number of, and you know when you've got a Kiri and a Pierce in your side um then they're going to make you pay every time. So, you know, I guess in some some instances it was 
disappointing that the Storm let it go. Roosters will be happy to get the win, but will be disappointed that they only did so with, with such an understrength Storm team. So, yeah, plenty of positives and, and negatives for, for both sides. But at the end of the day, you're playing for the two points, and two points is two points, and, and the Roosters get the last laugh there. Uh, second last game, so we're into the Sunday matches now. Dragons up against the Knights. Wow, what a game of uh, momentum shifts this was. Um, we see the Dragons lost Paul Vaughan there early in his 100th game, and he was he was shattered. He's got a calf injury there, and you know um, Nightingale ends up chalking up his 100th try of, of his career um, once he chalks up this double early on. Ends up with three in total. But... Uh, yeah, once it jumped out to, to 10 nil, you know, it was all Newcastle early. They had all the ball and then um, the, the Dragons just execute on this level and, and the, the running game of, of Widdop proved crucial um, on that left edge. But then they just went to sleep and, you know, Newcastle just started getting through their sets. You know, I guess the, there was a little bit of desperation as we'll, we'll see soon um, with, with Ross's effort here out of dummy half. He got, he got switched to fullback and, and Gagai back out to the centres and um, yeah, he proved pivotal. He played really, really well. Just getting getting into dummy half, but and then just playing out the the back here. You know that was just well executed. And then we'll see when um, Ross gets his third. It was just desperation, just off an error. Um, I think this is the Fitzgibbon try. Isn't he something? I think as far as young talents going in the back row, uh, we're we're spoiled for choice at the moment. You know, with the likes of of Hess and and um, Crichton just, and, and Adam Elliott, you know, we're, we're spoiled for choice. But yeah, we see Nathan Ross just capitalise on an error from uh, Harme Sele, who's been uh, guilty of turning over a, a few players. He did that against the Bulldogs as well. Um, but yeah, just just great desperation, great structure. And, and when it got out to 28-10, um, the, the blokes that were loading up on, on Newcastle head-to-head -head at $4.65, I know one of my mates was texting me at half-time and, and telling me how much of every dollar he got on top of that. But yeah, it, as soon as Thompson goes over for this one at the start, you, you can just smell that it's like, uh, yeah, Newcastle, can, can they put together 80? And the influence of, of Dugan here uh, just got the ball rolling. You know, it, it was pretty similar to what um, Nathan Ross did in the, in the first half for Newcastle as a fullback, just, you know, backed himself. Man. And you, they probably didn't expect him to take on the line there. And, and then it was just a matter of stripping numbers on this edge. We see Nightingale get his his hat-trick. So two hat-tricks um, from, from each respective outside back. But I thought the, the Newcastle Knights, they were even still a chance um, once they, they did hit the, the lead here. And great footwork shown by man and desperation. Still a lot of work to do. Um, there was just a few crucial penalties that, that sort of... You know, it didn't necessarily go Newcastle's way, but they were, they were 50 50. But, you know, when, when you're in games like that, you can't allow decisions to go 50 50. Um, and when you, you've got influential players in a Dragon side like Dugan, like Widder, um, they're, they're the sort of guys that revel in taking a game by the scruff of the neck and, and executing on that level. Uh, Again, I guess it's it's not too dissimilar um, to, to the previous game. Um, Dragons are very much expected to, to win this game, much like the Roosters were. Uh, not that, that Newcastle were missing any great deal of players, but you know they're, they're sitting on the bottom of the ladder for the reason. And I, I really felt like this was a game that the Dragons could play themselves into to more form, but again, they're, they're not putting together that 80-minute performance. And I think now that they've lost um, Paul Vaughan, that's going to be a massive hole in their um, in their armor, you know, at least in Armel, he did did step up to the plate and and uh, ran for 170 odd meters. Um, I thought Tyson Frizzell was was instrumental. 12 hit ups, 143 meters, and, and 23 tackles in just 50 odd minutes. But yeah, Dugan proved to be the difference. Um, 17 hit ups, 255 meters, and, and a try. Um, I think for Newcastle, you just got to stick to the, the, the structure and shape that, that works for you. Metaudia and, and Fitzgibbon are doing a great job um, on, on driving those edges for Newcastle. And, you know, Feeney and, and Lamb are doing well to create those opportunities in space. And as long as they continue to um, take the ball to the line, those opportunities will arise. But, you know, you, you can't afford to, 
to let those possessional shifts occur um, and, and expect not to, to pay the consequences. So, yeah, very much a case of, of another one that got away. So, you know, they've, they've had a, a close loss to the Dragons. They missed out on Manly a couple of weeks ago in atrocious conditions. So, you know, they could easily find themselves two or three wins clear of the Tigers. Um, and, and I hope for Newcastle's sake that they do get the win against the Tigers. I think they've been playing a lot more consistent footy than what the, the Tigers have been. And, um, yeah... All, all will be revealed, you know, Tedesco should be back for the, the Tigers next week and he'll add a lot to their structure. So, you know, if if they do leave Nathan Ross um, at fullback, it'll be a good little match up there. So I look forward to that. Into the final game, um, I've had to, just bear with me, there wasn't anything on on YouTube. So I'll have to play this just off the, the website. And I actually thoroughly enjoyed this game. So we had... Um, Manly, as I suspected they would, you know, they were they were massive outsiders in this game against Sharkies and came away with a 35 points to 18 win. Uh, and, and they were just out-enthused, um, the Cronulla side, and very much won the middle straight off the bat. Um, see that, Sirenen goes over in the first two minutes. Um, he had a bit of a hot and cold game. He came up with, with two errors um, not too long after that, and... Uh, they just laid the, the platform up the, up the guts. I thought to Power and Lawrence, you know, they were super, super aggressive. There was a lot of feeling in the game. Uh, and Captain Travojevic was, was huge too. So Lawrence ran for 111 metres. To Power, 210 metres. Travojevic, 174 metres. No uh, Sharks middle ran for over 100. I think Gallon had his quietest game for the season. Uh, and he ended up with 90 metres off from, from 12 hit-ups. So, you know, that I think, as we alluded to, with the, the look of their bench um, in Manly, leaving uh, no Hastings or Cullen, so so no middle to, to replace Coruscant, uh, they just went with four big men, and they, they just wanted to bash them up the guts and, and win that and impact their execution of their outside backs. Uh, this was my favourite try the whole weekend, even though they ended up in a, in a losing team. We've seen that, that Joey Johns... I was like, why are they kicking for touch? And it was a set play, and it was executed to perfection in isolating that edge edge player. Um, and then Sasai Feki um, steams over. Big, big play at the end there, at the end of the first half with DCE. Again, I think that's why he, he deserves to be looked at. He gets that field goal and gives him a seven-point lead. And I think the whole time it just gave him that little bit of breathing space and kept him in that attacking mindset. And that three-man cutout that we see from DCE there, look at that, Wooshka. Matt Wright goes in for his second, and isn't isn't he having a crack now that he's been given his opportunities with um, Tafua out and Travojevic when he was out earlier in the season, and he, he'll definitely be a mainstay of this Manly outfit. Um, the control and poise of Manly through Green and Cherry Evans was was the difference, and the way that they just targeted Maloney. Maloney ended up with seven missed tackles, and and once. They lost Brayley. I know um, Mortimer proved the difference late in the game for him against the Tigers, but you know he's he's been really really good. I know that he's been isolated um, early on in the middle defensively, Brayley. But yeah, to lose that kid, you, you hate to see that. It's looking like a, a broken jaw's been confirmed. So you know he'll be out for a number of weeks, and the Sharks will be relishing in the fact that Seguiaro is just about due back. Um, yeah, it was it was a clinical performance from Manly. Um, we'll jump out of there. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a clinical performance from Manly. I, I really enjoyed watching them play, and I, I've enjoyed their style. So, you know, the the commentary team yesterday on Channel Nine sort of alluded to a fact of, you know, a few of uh, throwaway players um, that that Barrett's sort of taken under his wing. Um, you know, Uate's got a second win. Um, who else do we have? Oh, the edge back rollers in in, in Winnerstein and, and Siren, and you know they they found new homes um, at Manly, and just the experience, like we said, leading into this game. One thing that I thought very much played in Manly's favour was was their their spine. Um, you know, DCE Green and Coruscant all played in grand finals. Um, they they very much got the the core group there to to go very very deep in this final series, and I think now after that win a lot of people will start to take them a lot more seriously. I know they sort of struggle for consistency on early on in the year and, you know, around that time where 
they beat Canberra in Canberra um, in that, that golden point match. I think that's when they really started to, to develop that, that self-belief. And from there, I know I sort of called out to, to Marty to power to develop his game and, and generate that consistency that, that's required of a, of a middle forward that has the potential that, that he does. And he's very much done that. His last month of footy has been phenomenal. Uh, and if he can maintain that consistency, geez, isn't he going to be a force to be reckoned with come the, the World Cup at the end of the year for New Zealand? So, yeah, we, we see that was the, the final game rounded out. The Sharks, you know, the, they've been grinding out wins, but they haven't been convincing at all. Uh, gallant in, in some respects without their origin stars over, you know, they've still managed to chalk up those two wins against the Dogs and the Tigers with, without all those players, and, and they're boxes that you want to be ticking for sure. But, you know, when you've, when you've got that sort of experience and talent in your side with someone like Maloney uh, to, to overwork him in defence. You know, it seems like such a simple game plan, but yeah, just the way that, that Manly executed on it was was phenomenal. And, and just their options, just on their edges, um, because they were afforded that luxury of, of battering um, the Sharkies up the middle, it really forced the, the, the Sharks to tighten up and, and make some defensive decisions on the edge. And, and you're seeing there when um, Cherry Evans threw that cutout to, to right, um, you know, that, that was super, super compressed. And yeah, it, <laughs> Wright had no no dramas in, in steaming over for that one. So yeah, it was it was a case of, of 50-50s teetering games. That was the only game that actually went 13 plus. Everything else was one to 12. So, you know, your, your margin bettings were, were on the, a knife's edge and there was some thoroughly entertaining matches um, across the weekend. But for mine, I think I, I enjoyed Manly's performance most. Uh, just just the execution. You know, you got their Sharks completed at 65%, four less line breaks and, and six less offloads. They just gave Manly way too many opportunities and the, the execution rate was high. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of teams at the moment that, that are getting opportunities, but they're, they're not executing on that level. You know, uh, I felt like the Brisbane side and the Canberra Raiders side were probably both, you know, in that same situation. Each side at, at different points in the game gave each other opportunities to, to execute and, and they didn't at times. Um, and, and the limited opportunities that they did get, the, the Bronx probably just executed a little bit better. So yeah, that, that pretty much wraps up everything for, for round 16. So head into a, another full round, uh, kicking off with, with Thursday night footy. So we're back into Thursday night games. We've got uh, Para and the, and the Bulldogs. I mean, we go all the way back through um, to, to Sunday. So yeah, it, it's going to be good now. We've got all our Origin stars back. Um, we're in for a blockbuster um, with with the Bronx and and uh, Melbourne this weekend. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that game. That's probably the the pick of the week for me, um, and, and it's good to see everyone back on board. So yeah, I'll, I'll be back on Thursday, and and we'll be previewing everything NRL round 17. Until then, gang, have a great week, and I shall see you ranting back on Thursday. Catches. <laughs>